Profite Request Forgery tokens allow the application server to check whether or not a form submission came from an authentic browser or if the submission was forged. So let's take a look at how they work. If we submit this form, there wouldn't be anything on the form that would tell the server whether or not it came from the user or whether a malicious piece of code generated the form and submitted the form on the user's behalf in the background. Cross-site request forgery tokens are random numbers that are placed onto the form by the server in case the user decides to submit the form. If the user submits the form, the server can check the token and make sure that the token matches the one that was placed on the form in the first place. So here we have a form that's protected by a token. If we right click and view page source, we'll be able to see the token. So in this hidden field here, we have the token. And it's the value of the token is a cryptographically secure random number. This means that the token generator has certain properties that make this number unpredictable. When we submit the form, the token is gonna to be sent along with the form and the server will be able to compare the token that we send to the one that it already has on file that it's storing inside of the user session. To keep an eye on what happens when we have the request and the response, we can use an interception proxy like Burp Suite to capture the request going back and forth. So we can watch the request and the token get sent, and then we can watch the response that comes back. We have Foxy Proxy set up to proxy our requests over to Burp Suite that's listening on its default port. With the browser using Burp as a proxy, we'll submit the request and we'll go over to Burp Suite to see the request. Here's the token. Now we're gonna go ahead and let this go on to the server. The server will compare the token to the one that's in the session, verify that it's a valid response, and the page returns normally. This particular page displays the tokens to make it easy to see what happened. So the server expected to get this particular token, and that was the token that was passed by us over to the server. It's also put a brand new token onto the form. In case we submit the form again, it'll check this against the token stored in the session to make sure they match. So let's do this again, but this time we're gonna change the value of the token and watch what happens. So we'll submit the form, but in Burp Suite, we're gonna go ahead and change the value of the token. We don't need to make much of a change. We'll just change any particular character to something else. And then we'll just let the token go on its way. Now we can see that the server was able to detect that the request was changed in some way and it threw an error. And this is because we changed one of the characters in the token. It expected to get this token here, but instead it got the one that we had changed slightly. And because they didn't match, the server knew something was wrong and refused to fulfill the request. There's a few points about these tokens that we need to do when we're developing cross-site request forgery defenses. 
need to make sure that the tokens are cryptographically secure random numbers. Modern frameworks are capable of producing these types of tokens, just need to check which function to call. In PHP, after version 7.3, we can call the random bytes function. Both Java and ASP.NET have similar functionality where they can generate cryptographically secure random numbers. But we also need to note that each of these languages also has a regular random number generator. And these standard random number generators don't necessarily generate truly random numbers. So mine the documentation and call the function that generates the cryptographically secure random tokens. Also, make sure the token is long enough. Now, several sources say that tokens that are 43 bytes in length should be strong enough to resist current attacks. And certainly if we just increase this up to the next power of two, which would be 64 bytes, that would seem to give us enough padding to be reasonably secure. Most of these functions like the ones in Java, .NET, and PHP take in as an argument the number of bytes that you wanna generate. So usually it's just a matter of passing in 64 in order to get back 64 bytes. And in this case, we've set the variable that controls the number of bytes to 64 to solve this particular problem. Also notice that our system is not reusing the tokens. We don't wanna reuse the token more than once. The idea of the cross site request forgery token is based on another concept called a one-time pad. And one of the key rules of a one-time pad is do not reuse your key more than one time. This is because the secrecy of the system itself depends on the secrecy of the key. And so once the key's been used, it starts to become exposed and there's a greater chance that somehow or another the key will be revealed by never using the tokens more than once. You make the system reasonably secure. So hopefully now this helps you understand how the cross-site request forgery tokens protect application forms.